if you've worked with Xcode before, you might have encountered this type of error saying that expressions are not allowed here. Or maybe you read this term in the Swift documentation. What is an expression actually? We will find out in this video. In Swift, an expression is a combination of values, variables, operators, and function calls that are evaluated to produce a single value. It can be as simple as a single value or as complex as a combination of multiple values and operators. There are four types of expressions in Swift. Let's see each of them. The first ones are prefix expressions. Prefix expressions combine an optional prefix operator with an expression. For example, we have in out expressions to mark a variable in an in out parameter in a function using ampersand operator. A try expression to indicate an expression might throw an error. And an await expression to indicate that an expression might run in an async context. Next, we have infix expressions that use a binary operator along with two expressions to build a larger expression. Examples of infix expressions are assignment operator, ternary conditional operator that evaluates a boolean condition in line to either return the left expression if the condition is true or the right expression if the condition is false and typecasting operators to verify or convert an expression into a specific type. Now we have primary expressions. Those are the most basic kind of expressions and they can be combined with other kind of expressions too. For example, we have literal expressions like numbers, strings, arrays, dictionaries, booleans, nil, and one of these special literals that work has compiler directives. We will explore all of these compiler directives in a later video. There are even something called playground literals to represent colors, files, and images in Xcode. Next, we have self-expressions to get explicit access to a member, subscript, or initializer from an instance of a type. Same with superclass expressions to get access to parents, class members, and units. Closure expressions that, like a function declaration, contain statements and it captures constants and variables from its enclosing scope. We will talk more about statements and some differences between expressions in the next episode. Don't forget to stay tuned and subscribe. Moving on, we have implicit member expressions which is an abbreviated way to access a member of a type, such as an enumerator case or a type method. Parenthesize expressions that simply are expressions between parentheses. Topple expressions that consist of a comma-separated list of expressions surrounded by parentheses. Each expression can have an optional identifier before it, separated by a colon. Just a note here. Both an empty tuple expression and an empty tuple type are written as an empty set of parentheses in Swift. Because void is a type alias of empty parentheses, you can use it to write an empty tuple type. However, like all type aliases, void is always a type. You can't use it to write an empty tuple expression. Next, we have wildcard expressions to discard values during an assignment. Keypad expressions to refer to a property or subscript of a type. We already have a video about it in case you want to learn more. Selector expressions that let you access the selector used to refer to a method or to a property's getter or setter in Objective C. And finally, for primary expressions, we have keypad strings expressions that let you access the string used to refer to a property in Objective C. Lastly, let's talk about the four category, postfix expressions, which are formed by applying a postfix operator or other postfix syntax to an expression. Let's start with function call expressions that consist of a function name followed by a comma separated list of the function's argument in parentheses. Next, we have initializer expressions to access to a type's initializer explicit member expressions to access the members of a named type, a tuple, or a module. Next, we have the postfix self expression. The first form evaluates the value of the expression. For example, x.self evaluates x. The second form evaluates the value of the type. For example, some class.self evaluates the some class type itself. 
you can pass it to a function or method that accepts a type level argument. Next, we have subscript expressions that allow to access the variable getter and setter through bracket syntax. If you want to learn more about subscripts, check out the link in the description. Next, we have the favorite of many, force value expression that allow you to unwrap an optional value. Just be sure it's not nil. Finally, we have optional chaining expressions that allow you to safely access properties, methods, and subscripts of an optional value without having to explicitly check if the value is nil. If the value is nil, then the whole expression will return nil and will stop evaluating the rest of the properties. Check out my video about optionals in the description too. As you can see, expressions are a fundamental part of Swift and are used extensively in writing code. That's it for this video. In the next one, we'll explore statements and see the difference between expressions. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.